Mm -hmm. Ah, Judge Boyd, she has a mind like a steel trap. Today, she's going to be running up against some people who say they don't have problems, but they obviously do. Don't mess with Judge Boyd, or you might end up behind bars. Okay. She's right here. I'm a positive judge for methamphetamines, opioids, and amphetamines. Here's the problem. You've been missing your um, reporting. You've been missing your reporting. Yes, I've been in and out of the hospital the past three weeks. Well, I left AMA by myself. And I stopped taking my antibiotics and it got worse. And like I have a um, PID, uh, tubular ovarian cyst. And uh, so how does meth play a role in this? It doesn't. I, I messed up. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. All right. Um, you're, you're not under oath or anything, but how often are you using? I really don't. I'm, that's why I was asked her. I said, maybe it's a zip. Xanax I took that method, but I don't do any of Are you on uh, medication for Xanax? Do you have a prescription? No. So you're still not supposed to do that. I understand. So here's the thing. Your attorney's not here. You need to report to your pretrial services officer today. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Ferguson? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm going to have you have the seat. And can you have Robert Geyer? That's her pretrial services officer. See if he can zoom in. No. Oh, yes, you're right. It's the attorney. It is Steve, Stephen Avina. So just have a seat. We're going to have your pretrial services officer zoom in. All right. Officer Avina, if you can unmute, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hi. Thank you so much for zooming in. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am, of course. All right. So before me is Haley Moy. In my understanding, you all had difficulty contacting her. Or basically you had no contact with her? So on her initial reporting for orientation date, she did not report. Um, however, on the 2nd of January, I was able to make contact with her and conduct her orientation. All right. When is her... her? I'm sorry. Go ahead. On the 2nd of January, I did conduct her orientation for conditions of bond. All right. So when's the last time you had contact with her? Was it the 2nd of January? No, ma'am. So on the 1st of February, I had contact with her and she informed me she's on bed rest. However, we've never received any documentation. All right. So I'm going to give her a deadline to give you all documentation. And I am going to want her in outpatient treatment. And if you could waive the fees for that, because she tested positive in court today. Okay. Yes, so when are you going to have the documentation? Yeah, I have an appointment uh, next Wednesday with my doctor, and that's when I can get her handwritten. So right now, I'm just getting it on my, my chart from university. They don't let me screenshot anything. They said for security. That's okay. So you're saying Wednesday the 21st? Yes. All right. So are you able to schedule an appointment with her on Thursday or Friday the 22nd or 23rd? I can. No, I can no, no. Call. I'm talking to him. Oh, okay. So, Your Honor, you wanted her to have outpatient treatment. Is that correct? Yes. So I would actually have to submit a transfer to a separate section in our office, um, and that would be entirely based upon what they can do. Okay. But before... Uh, so who would she... I want to make sure she reports and gives proof of the hospitalization. Correct. So can she report on the 22nd or 23rd? Yes, ma'am. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with bond conditions. I want to continue with the random drug and alcohol testing. There is going to be outpatient treatment. And I'll ask that fees are waived since she has these medical issues. Mm -hmm. And she is to report with proof of hospitalization and medical diagnosis and treatment okay. 
Uh, no later than February 22nd. Is there anything else you need from the court? Yeah. All right. Is there anything else she's going to need with you all? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you so much for zooming in. Yes, Your Honor. Have a good right. day. Thank you. You too. So, Miss Moy, who brought you down here today? Uh, my husband's mom. No, there was a, a guy in court that you were hugged up with. Who was that? My husband. All right. So, if he were drug tested, what would his results be? And let me just tell you. I'm not even asking. Probably the same as mine. All right. So this is the thing. You cannot be using drugs and be with the person who's using drugs. What's his name? Cody. Cody what? Good Ed. You don't know his last name? Good Ed all. I'm not, I don't know how to say it. I'm not. No. I mean, you should know your boyfriend's or husband's last name. Good Ed all. Is he in the hallway? Mm -hmm. Have him come in. Could somebody call Cody to come in, please? That's good, Judge. Where are your parents? They're not in the in the picture. Do you have any family? Um, oh, you know what? His name is on your face. Turn to the side. Let me see what no, it says. It's not. Cody Banks. Is that his name? No, that's not his last name. Well, who is Cody Banks? That's just that's just what I got on my face. It's not his last name. Okay. All right. What's your last name? Hello. And your first name? Cody. And who's Cody Banks? All right, so you Cody Guerrero and Cody Banks? It's just a nickname. You didn't know his nickname? Well, I, I saw my face. No, I mean, I asked you who that was. I asked you if that's the same person. Yeah. You said you don't know. <laughs> All right, and there's Sue. Uh, so your mother is the person who brought you both down here today and brought you all both from where? My grandma. All right. So you all are living with your grandmother? Yeah, she has a house in the back. Yeah, all right. I'm sure your grandmother doesn't want people living in with her who are using. So this is what's going to end up happening. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. If you need a place to stay, it's not going to be with him. I'm already in no contact with Cody Guerrero or Cody Banks. And let me just tell you what the reason why I'm doing that. He's using, he's not under any type of jurisdiction of the court so he can continue to use if he so choose. I don't recommend doing that because I don't think you want your grandmother or your mom to have to identify your body. You need to go somewhere and get into treatment. And whose name is over your eyebrow? It's Vanessa. Vanessa what? Vanessa. Vanessa? What are you finessing? Everything. All right. Not doing a good job, but okay. So here's the thing. You are not allowed to live with him. He's in the throes of his addiction. You're in the throes of your addiction. And two people who are in the throes of their addiction cannot help each other. Because if you try to stop using, which you're going to have to, guess what? If he's using, you're going to want to use. And if you try to stop using and she wants to use, you're going to use because you're together. So you're not allowed to live with him anymore. You understand? Mm -hmm. So there's Haven for Hope. There's Salvation Army. They actually have a great women's program as well. And you can try lifetime recovery. And I'll add on here uh, a referral to lifetime recovery. But you should not be with him. And do you have employment? No, I received social security. For what? Schizophrenia. I'm sorry, for what? Schizophrenia. All right. So you should not be coming down with her for this. You understand? And you all shouldn't be dragging your mother and your grandmother into this. All right. And you, you don't want anybody to have to identify your body because the last time you use may be the last time you use. And don't be going to hospitals and doctors to try and get medications when you really shouldn't be getting medications. Do not doctor shop because when you doctor shop, if one of those doctors, for example, forgets to put something in a system or something breaks down with communication, another doctor could prescribe you something that could cause you to 
have your life ended. You understand? Yes. So I'm going to um, email Stephen Avina and I'm going to tell him to add no contact with Cody Guerrero, Cody Banks and a referral to lifetime recovery. And just as a side note, when you're doing tattoos of people's names on your body, there are only two safe choices. Your mom, because usually people's moms love them and they're always going to be there for them and children. If you end up leaving him, guess what? Your boyfriend going to be asking, who is Cody Banks? You may be able to slide a little bit because Cody Banks is the name of a Nick Lodian show. But otherwise, you're not going to be able to slide. Do you understand? All right. Good luck to you. Make sure you report to uh, pretrial services. Is my other court date reset? No, it's the same. So for today? Ms. Ferguson, if you can make sure she has a reset form so she'll know when to come back to this court. But you're going to pretrial services on February 22nd. Yes. And then you have a different date to come back here, okay? Okay. All right. And make sure next time you come in, Tops meet, need to be able to cover the stomach, okay? Just, All right, good luck to you. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? Fine. Uh, well, it doesn't seem like you're doing well because you're before me. Yes, ma'am. And you're not before me because you've been successful. And you're not before me because you have questions. You're before me because I have questions and probation has questions. Uh, All right, let me ask you this. If you're revoked on this, how much time could you do in prison? What's the, no, no, no. Everybody will say, I can't do any time in prison. You know, somebody would tell this story for us when, this is when I first started out. They said the judge asked the defendant, so how much time could you do in prison? Just let me know. And you know what they said? The defendant told him, oh, I can do two days. And you know what the judge told him? You know what? You just look at every time as two days increments. And you know what that judge did? Sent that person to prison for 30 years. So on this case, how much time could I send you to prison for? How much you can? Yeah. 10 years. 10 years? Do you want to go to prison? No, ma'am. Do you want to go to prison because you are not doing what you're supposed to do? And people, well, you're acting as though you do because people are working with you and it says your counselor, contacted you and said you missed your group session. Wow. And then the counselor said, look, I will let you make up those sessions. And your answer to this counselor, knowing you, you could go to prison for 10 years was, I don't think I can do that. So do you think you can do 10 years in prison? No, no. Then why are you acting like you can? I, I, I live in Universal City, ma'am. And um, recently uh, I've been just struggling. You know, I've lost my job. Um, because of transportation, getting back and forth, there's no uh, public transportation in University City. Um, I, Mr. Sheridan was is a wonderful counselor. You know, I, I did go set up that meeting with him again because um, he helps me a lot. You know, uh, I just wasn't able to. I'm not able to move, like get to places, you know. So who do you know in Universal City? I have a roommate. Uh, I don't have no family out here. All my family has passed away. Uh, I'm from California. You know, so I don't really have people here. You know, I, I don't have any help. Um, I've been paying $400 every two weeks at where I'm staying just to live there. You know, and then I've been catching Uber and live back and forth to work to get there. And then I, that's a lot of money, you know, I, can't, I don't have it. You know, and then um, I've been trying to do it. I could get to places, you know, like today I walked from Universal City to Converse to catch the bus to get here today. But um. I just, I don't have like funds. Like I'm just getting backed up and on everything and everything is kind of like coming at me at one time. And I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't have no help. You know, I don't have no nothing. How old are you? 30, about to be You'll 30 be next take, month. You'll be asked to step I'll outside. Be, just 31. one second. I'm sorry. Yes, Who is talking to the inmates like this is visitation? Who is it? Deputy Lord, who, who was it? Excuse me. Hi, miss. I'm going to need you to step outside the courtroom. All right. I'll be third. Yes. I'll be 31 next month. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'll be 31. All right. So you're going to have to sit down with somebody. And by somebody, I mean probation will help you. You're going to have to get employment and figure out a budget. I do um 
I have income tax. I did get. I was working on last year. I have income tax coming February twenty sixth. That's going. Well, to- I hope you didn't have somebody do your income tax where they take no, a major not. percentage of it, and I, then I don't. I don't know. I just file. You know, I file with her uh, every year. You know, I work every year. Yes, ma'am. And- All right. So he's saying he lives in Universal City. Are we aware of him living in Universal City? Did you let them know you lived in Universal City? No. So state, this appears to be his issue. He doesn't have any transportation. I was able to obtain my license. Um, I've been working on that. I did get a car, but the next day it had a blown head gasket. So I lost it and I lost my money. So that kind of set me back as well. You know, and I've been, I was just, I've been trying to get a car like the right way because that's why I really tried, got my license and that, did that because I didn't want to get another car that was going to go bad on me. So um, I, I got my license and trying to do it. All right. And they say you work full time. OK. That's my house. All right. Uh, Miss Abrams, yes, Judge. they're asking for him to restart IOP. Yes, Judge. That is the recommendation. Um, and Additionally, to for him to restart IOP, I do want to ensure that he is enrolled in the IOP course at least by the either end of the month or you know mid March. Okay. Um, ma'am, I I try, try to um, enroll into the BIP class online um, due to my transportation issues, but it was one hundred ninety five dollars mm-hmm. to enroll. I don't, I didn't have the money. You know, I enrolled, I enrolled in Mr. Sheldon's class. All right. And see, here's the thing. I understand how finances are hitting you, right? That's right. But you know why these financial, financial issues are hitting you and you got to still just deal with it? Because these are consequences for your offense. That's right. So if you would not have committed this offense, guess what? I wouldn't be in this You wouldn't situation. be here. Uh, Ms. Abrams? With regards to enrollment in BIP, he says he's getting his income tax. So we can give him till March 28th to enroll in BIP. You drug tested today. What are the results going to be? I did it in Georgia. All right. So we're going to drug test him today. Your Honor, I would like to point out that his last drug test was positive um, for marijuana back in December. So we can see if that's out of the system right now. Okay. All right. So you're going to get drug tested today? Wow. And we're going to see what the results are. And if the results are positive, we're going to have another conversation. But for now, he's enrolling the BIP on March 28th. And he's to restart IOP. So you're still telling me it's going to be negative? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Abrams? No, Judge. All right, just sit there. Do you need any water or anything? Yes, please. All right, just have a seat. Mr. Moody, come forward. So we're not on the record. When's the last time you used marijuana? I haven't used it since December. No, I mean, unless something is wrong with the laws of physics and the time continuum has changed, you should not be positive for marijuana if the last time you use is in December. So let me just tell you something right now. You're on probation out of this court. If you want to continue to use marijuana, you're an adult, that's up to you. But using marijuana while you're on probation is not allowed. It's against your conditions of probation. And guess what? You may or may not end up going to prison for 10 years. And when people ask you why you're at the prison for 10 years, you can tell them because you wanted to use marijuana. And I'm sure at the prison, there's a way that people can make their marijuana. I know there's a way that people can make their alcohol if they so choose to imbibe, but you will be at the prison. And guess what? At the prison, you don't have to worry about catching but one bus. And you know what that bus is? The bus from the jail to the prison. So I am not going to tolerate any more excuses from you, because if you can find time to do marijuana, 
you can find time to get to Universal City. I don't want to hear this nonsense about I had to walk from Universal City to Converse because guess what? Those are consequences from being on probation. You need to get a job and in your job, you need to include reporting to probation and doing your treatment. You should have been done with treatment, but no, you're missing classes. Any other place, guess what they would have done? Maybe issued a warrant for your arrest instead of having this conversation and you'll be taken into custody and you will be brought out wearing orange or red, whichever category they put you in. Do you understand? And if the roommate you're living with is allowing you to use marijuana where you all live, then that's not a good roommate. But I am not going to tolerate any more nonsense with you not following through on what you need to do. This is the last conversation we're going to have, the last compliance we're going to have. If I get another report and everything is in order, I'm going to sign it. And when I sign it, it's going to be for a motion to revoke. You will have to make bond. If you don't make bond, you'll be brought over and we will hear the allegations. Either they're going to be true or not true. And if they're true, you're looking at potentially 10 years in prison. So it's up to you to make the decision of whether or not marijuana is worth 10 years of your life, potentially, or one year, or five days. You understand? So do not come back here before trying to get tea and sympathy for me. You understand? All right, good luck to you. And probation on Mr. Moody, if you can make sure that he's tested for levels.